Welcome back, everybody, to the Wrestle Buddy Raw recap with your Drip King, Jimmy Bebe. You should already know the drill by now, so let's get right into the show. If you've seen any of the last three or four shows, you know how it's going to start either with Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, or Big E. This week it starts off with Seth Rollins with a pre-take promo talking about how he can't wait to watch Kevin Owens and Big E rip each other apart in the cage and then walk away at day one champion. It's followed up by Big E talking about what he's going to do to Kevin Owens in the cage and it's followed up by Kevin Owens talking about what he's going to do to Big E in the cage. So that's right, we're starting this Monday Night Raw off with a steel cage match between the WWE champion Big E and Kevin Owens. Yes, it's a rematch, but these two have great chemistry. The matches are always awesome, and this one's in a steel cage, so who's really gonna complain? If you're complaining, go ahead and turn it off now. Bye bye. Go. I, I don't I don't mess with y'all people. Complain about something you're getting like this, it's amazing. It's gonna be a great match, and that's exactly what they did. They delivered big time. At one point, they're both crawling over the cage because Kevin Owens he, bell rings, he's immediately running for the door. He's trying to get out. There's it multiple times to start the match off, but at one point they're both going and then out of nowhere here comes Seth Rollins, slams the door on both of them, knocks them both out. Commercial break, come back, back to the match, Seth Rollins out, just having the time of his life. Watch these two beat the hell out of each other. You get some good spots in here, typical stuff you expect from Kevin Owens. He's one of the best in the biz. If you don't know this by now, you better learn because it's it's just a fact. It's not an opinion, it's a fact. One of the best in the biz. Always puts on a fantastic match. Love it, love it, love it, love it. This match would end Big E hitting the big ending off the second rope. It, fantastic spot. Kevin sold it so damn good. Big E crawling over. Kevin Owens tries to stop him. A couple boots to the face. Kevin Owens falls out again. Big E crawls out. End of the match. You know what happens next? Here comes Seth Rollins. Attacks him on the outside. Cage goes up, goes in. He tries to attack Kevin Owens, but Big E's back and he takes out Seth Rollins. Kevin Owens getting up. Big E ain't done with him. Hits him with another big end and commercial break. That's it, you think. But hold up. This things get a little bit weird because we come back and all three of them are now laid out. How the heck did that happen? Turns out. During commercial break, Bobby Lashley, of all people, come the Bobby Lashley. This, this makes no sense. He just comes out of nowhere and takes all three of them out. And they do the commercial break. Bad timing, bad idea. I don't get it. And then we don't even hear from Bobby Lashley the rest of the show until the very, very end. It's weird. Very weird. Very weird. But it is what it is. Great opening match. Definitely worth your time. Watch it. Watch it and enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, something wrong with you. Something wrong with you big time. But that was that. Good stuff. Goes right after that, though. You know, they show the big Bobby Lashley attacking all three of them. And then it goes right into Queen Selena and Carmella coming out. Queen Selena is doing her little queen gimmick. Running her mouth. Poor Nikki Ash this. Poor Nikki Ash that. So that's who she's fighting. Nikki Ash. At this point, it's a little bit, excuse me. It's a little bit tiring. This, this is done. If, if Nikki Ash is doing something with her character, they can do it without having to do this match again in some way, shape, or form with Carmella tagged at something. They, they, it's, it's the same match we've seen. Nikki Ash gets her stuff in. Queenslee gets her stuff in. Distraction. Something along the lines. Queenslee hits the code red. One, two, three. Nikki Ash loses again. I told you what happened. You don't need to watch it. Especially if you've seen it any of the last few weeks that they've shown. Done. Don't need to see it. But after that, we go to RK Bro. MVPs of the show. Every time you see these guys on, you know it's going to be comedy. It's going to be fantastic because that's what Riddle brings to the show. And Randy, Randy's just having the time of his life. I've never seen this man having this much fun doing professional wrestling stuff. So the they come Randy Riddle, not Randy, Riddle came up with the idea we're gonna do a RK Bronament to figure out who's gonna be the number one contender. And during the uh, Bronament, RK Bronament, we're gonna be correspondents. He's got himself a little correspondence jacket. He's got the earpiece, so he's gonna be doing interviews. He's got one for Randy. Randy's like, I'm not wearing that. He caves though eventually and he wears it. 
Randy's getting a little soft for Riddle. Never thought we'd see the day where the legend killer is going soft, but that's what's happening. He puts on the jacket, they go out, do commentary for the first round of the arcade Ronin. What match is it? It's a rematch. It's it's not a bad one because this match was better than the last one, but we get AJ and Omos taking on the Street Profits. It's a, it's a nice back and forth, nothing special, nothing nothing bad. If you like the Street Profits, you can watch. If you like AJ, you can watch it. It's a good match. What's worthy to note here, AJ Styles, he's on the outside getting ready to do that phenomenal forearm. He, he's amping himself up. Here comes Omos. Tags himself in, almost, and as AJ's up, AJ drops down and goes, what the heck, man? Almost comes in and starts taking everybody out. He goes to the outside and he starts taking everybody out. And AJ's just like, what the heck, man? What the heck, man? You know what's happening at this point. Eight, nine, ten, count out. AJ and almost lose count out because almost getting too big for his britches. AJ's like, what the heck, man? What the heck? Street Profits leave because they got the win. AJ, Omos, he's like, man, you got to listen to me. That's how this tag team works, Omos says. <laughs> Turns around, walks off. AJ's left by himself. Here comes Riddle, do an interview, says, I'm here to get the scoop. I need the juicy details. AJ's like, it's just a miscommunication. That's all it is, and he leaves. That's the end of this segment. The AJ Omos stuff is the interesting thing here. Riddle doing some commentary. That's worth your time, because again, Comedy, 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 comedy. They're the MVPs of the show. Week in and week out. Never changes. It, he's just that good. Randy's helping. It's good stuff. After that, let's see. We got Becky Lynch in the back being interviewed. Nothing special here. She just downplays this being a big moment. She goes, it's a big moment for Liv, but I'm big time Bex. This is what I do. If you like Becky promos, you can watch it. But again, compared to other stuff, it's pretty pedestrian not really worth that much of your time come back and we got priest doing a u.s title open challenge i like this because we need priest getting more matches and i want to see him wrestle more people i don't want to see him i'm glad we ain't doing the apollo crew stuff no more. that's done good leave it in the rear view don't ever bring it back i don't want to see it what's really good about this is bobby Roode is the man that answers the challenge so we get in a fresh matchup for the u.s title a nice opponent for Damian Priest and what we got was a solid match. Priest obviously picks up the win because Bobby Roode hasn't been built up for anything. After the match though you get Ziggler attacking them which is cool because you know what's happening next week Ziggler and Priest that's a good matchup and it's also new. Two new matchups one segment set this week set up for next week I like it it's very effective they continue to do great things with Damian Priest I'm excited I'm pumped good stuff. If you like Bobby Roode, you like Damian Priest, it's worth your watch. It's like I said, it's not a special match, but it is a good solid match. After that, we get Bianca Bear coming out, doing a whipping her hair, skipping down the ring, then do drop from behind. Bam! Tax her, beats down, goes in the ring. They have a matchup coming up next, and this is my I won't say match tonight because Big E and Kevin Owens, but Bianca and Dewdrop show out. This is a great match two segment match I won't tell you much about it other than the fact that it ends with a count out once Dewdrop slithers out from Bianca trying to do KOD she struggled but she's literally about to get her up Dewdrop drop, leaves says I ain't with this count out don't let the count out discourage you from watching this match because it is great and it's a special it's a really good match that doesn't revolve around the title I always like that with the women because the women deserve this kind of spotlight especially someone like Dewdrop she deserves it great match watch it tell me what you think in the comments let me know but we're probably gonna get that rematch at day one we're gonna get that big moment where she does do the KOD on Dewdrop it's gonna be awesome that's why I'm okay with the count out here it's a good match good setup for day one on to the next thing though where we get a recap of Vince McMahon and Austin Theory last week where he's like need to be ready for anything then he slaps him Austria's left shock like what the heck after recap we got Vince McMahon in the backstage and he's with Austin Theory again Austin Theory's like I'm here and then Vince is like you need to impress me you need to impress me cut that it was very short come back we got another RK oh uh, no we got Miz TV with Edge 
if you like last week's promo, you'll like this one. It's not as juicy and hard hitting and copying the mid, uh, MJF punk promo is a lot of people think, but it is a good one. Maybe even better because you don't have that in the head. Like, oh, are they copying? It's good stuff. Miz reminding you why he's goaded on the microphone. Definitely watch that. It's a nice setup for their little feud that they got going on without getting physical. No rematches involved. Just great mic work. Awesome stuff. On to the next. We got Liv Morgan backstage. And compared to the promo she gave last week, what was really fantastic, this fell flat. She's just like, everyone's watching me because they know I'm going to win. Okay, I don't care. On to the next part. Guess what? Veer's still coming. I hope they send someone to get him because he has no idea where he's going. I feel like by the time he gets to the to the arena, it's from last week and they're already at this week's. So he's just a week behind. That's why he continues to be coming, but he never gets there. And when he does get there, he's probably just going to fall. They, they, I don't think they have any plans for this man. It's just stop showing it. Stop. It's over with. It's over with. Back, back. That uh, we got Riddle back on commentary. Our Randy's bot. Randy's not out there this time. He he gave the gave it to Riddle, and he's out there for the next part, round one, match two of the RK Roman, and we're getting the Mysterios versus Alpha Academy. This match is okay. It is new. We didn't. It's not Alpha Academy versus Street Profits. So that's a good thing. But are we gonna get them in the finals? Thankfully, no, because the Mysterios pull out a win. They got Dominic doing all the heavy lifting in this one. Otis never even tags in. I don't know. What's up with that? I don't know. But he ends up getting Chad Gable with a roll up. Poor Chad Gable. He just keeps getting pinned by everybody. Mysterios move on. They go to the back. Here comes Riddle again to interview the losers. Otis ain't having it. He slams them. End of segment. No Randy to help him. And then they walk off. That might be setting up a thing in the future for uh, Alpha Academy versus RK Bro, which I'm all for. I think they'd be a great team to dethrone them because Otis needs Otis needs some gold on. I think it's past time. Chad Gable needs gold on because he's fantastic. Make that one in the future, please, please, please don't let the Mysterios of the Street Profits take out RK Bro. But that's just personal opinion. We done with that segment. It was nothing special. On to the next one because that's what we do then we got theory doing jumping jacks in this man's office Vince is on the phone he's like when are you gonna impress me and Austin's like I got an idea he unzips his shirt and he starts doing jumping jacks he said look at my abs while he's doing jumping jacks he's like that's not what I had in mind why don't you use your brains Austin Theory's like hmm I got it runs out of the room commercial break we come back and it's Vince it's Finn Balor taking on T-Bar not a marquee matchup but it's always nice to see Dijakovic I'm getting rid of the T-Bar name it's Dijakovic it's nice to see Dijakovic in the ring getting some some TV time he doesn't get enough time with Finn Balor though the match is nothing special it's it's skippable I'll be honest he doesn't put up that big of a fight Finn Balor wins coup de gras one two three it's over with aftermath though here comes Austin Theory to impress Vince McMahon. Boom, boom. Takes out Finn Balor. Hits the move. Takes the selfie. Leaves. All for Austin Theory and Finn Balor. It's going to be a great feud. And it's just Austin Theory. He's on that. He's on that rise. I'm telling you. I've been telling you. I've been telling you. She listen to me. You know what I'm talking about. I can't wait. Austin Theory, Finn Balor at day one most likely. Austin Theory should definitely go over here. Poor Finn Balor. Though, again... That's just his role at this point until he leaves, which maybe he will, maybe I, I don't know. But he he definitely takes more losses than he should. Done with that, though. On to the next segment. It's 24-7 segment. If you like it, watch it. If you don't like 24-7, don't watch it. It's 24-7. You know what to expect at this point. On to the next, though, and we get MVP and Bobby Lashley commenting on why they did what they did earlier. They felt disrespected. They're having a championship match without Bobby. That's wrong. When you disrespect Bobby Lashley, that's what happens. Very short, very simple. Tells the story a little bit. I really hope they don't add him to day one. That would be bad. That's, that's a bad idea. Please don't do that. It's already 
too much going on. And Bobby Lashley too at this point just seemed me weird. My only guess there would be if they're adding Sami Zayn to Brock and Roman, they don't want two triple threats. They got maybe one a triple threat and one a quadruple threat. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do any of that. We got a triple threat. We got a one-on-one. -on -one. Leave it. But again, personal opinion on to the next segment. The final segment is going to be Becky Lynch versus Liv Morgan. And they gave Liv Morgan and Becky some time. When Becky was coming out, they had about 30 minutes after the entrance commercials package. They really build and live up in this show. It gets down to about 20 minutes, which is still a very respectable amount of time to give Liv Morgan in her first big match. And it's a main event anniversary, the first main event, Lita, uh, Lita versus Trish. Uh, I'll be honest, I think this is Liv Morgan's best match to date. The ending, people are going to be mad about it, but. It's to further the story. It, that That's what a lot of the things was tonight. To further story going into day one. I'm sure Liv will get a rematch at day one. She de she lost. Becky rolled her up. Reversed, reversed roll up. Held the ropes. One, two, three. Liv gets screwed. She knows she got screwed. She's It's not over. It's not over. And it's not. They will rematch at day one. As much as they made me believe Liv was going to win tonight. I honestly think she might win it day one, which would blow my mind. But that's for another day. I won't get into that theory sh stuff. I'm just here for the recap. That's your recap. I saved you two hours and 43 minutes because we are riding up on 17 minutes. So I'm going to close it right now. Thank you for watching. Comment below. Let me know how I did. Let me know what you think about it. Tell me how much you enjoyed the show. Watch the stuff I told you to. Don't watch the stuff I told you not to. And I will see y'all next week with another edition of the Wrestle Buddy Raw Recap with Jimmy Bebe, the Drip King. And that's all. Goodbye. Boom.